Hi there, I'm Jaren, and in this video I'm going to bombard you with nuclear physics. Get it? Ha ha ha. Well, you might think that nuclear science is bad because it gave us bombs used in catastrophic nuclear wars. The International Atomic Energy Agency, an organization within the United Nations, sees to it that nuclear science is not used this way. As such, they monitor nuclear plants all over the world to check if any unauthorized nuclear activities are being carried out. They do their utmost to keep the world safe from catastrophic nuclear war. However, their current methods of monitoring nuclear plants are not very accurate and can be fooled and hacked. This poses a major problem for the world's safety. Thankfully, there is an emerging technology which is promisingly accurate the antineutrino detector. Might I mention that antineutrinos are quite a hot topic nowadays, especially since the 2015 Nobel Prize in Physics was granted to Kajita and MacArthur for proving the existence of neutrino oscillations. I won't talk about neutrino oscillations here, but it's nice to see how neutrinos are quite the buzz today in both theoretical and practical applications. Now, nuclear reactors are the world's leading source of man-made antineutrinos as byproducts of various nuclear reactions. They produce 10 to the 21 antineutrinos per second. But because antineutrinos are electrically neutral and have extremely small masses, they travel straight for long distances without interacting with matter. Only 1 in 100 billion antineutrinos passing through matter interact with it, but this is sufficient to detect them. Thus, Antonin Vecheret from the University of Oxford and his research team have invented a solid portable antineutrino detector that is suitable for monitoring reactions in nuclear plants. To understand how these detectors work, let's look at another type of antineutrino detector commonly used today, a large tank of water doped with gadolinium. Occasionally, an antineutrino collides with a proton in the water, producing a positron and a neutron. Within nanoseconds, this positron annihilates with an electron to produce photons, which are detected as flashes of light. Several microseconds later, the neutron is captured by the nucleus of a gadolinium-157 atom, forming an excited gadolinium-158 atom that emits this excitation energy as photons, producing another light flash. It's an effective antineutrino detection mechanism, but it has to be kept underground to shield it from cosmic rays. Vacheret's invention works on the same principle, but using lithium in place of gadolinium to capture the neutrons. According to Vacheret, the exact locations of the positron and neutron events can be detected within a 5 cm cube, and the distance between them is unique for reactor-produced antineutrinos. Hence, this invention need not be stored underground and can thus be carried to the nuclear reactor that is to be monitored. It's portable. Other previously developed techniques for antineutrino detection used liquid scintillators or substances that emit light when excited by ionizing radiation. This patent of scintillator compositions by Dijkstra et al. lays claim to various scintillators using boron as a neutron capture agent. The advantage of this invention over previous ones is that it has fewer substances, making it more stable. Dijkstra et al. claim that this scintillator can be manufactured in large quantities, but this claim is disputed today by those working with gadolinium-doped water tanks, which are still most effective and highly scalable. I must admit that there are no active nuclear plants in the Philippines, so this is none of our business, right? Wrong! We should be concerned, as we can never truly predict who will go to war with whom, and nuclear technological developments left unchecked could result in global catastrophes. It is time to be aware of the power of nuclear technology and to ensure that it is not used destructively. That is the mission of the IAEA, but its importance is underestimated. The budget of the IAEA is quite small for its needs. Constantly monitoring nuclear facilities around the world is very expensive. Sadly, also, the U.S. Department of Energy rejected a proposal to fund the construction of a long-distance anti-neutrino detector called Watchman, which would have been good in many situations. The world needs to realize the importance of such technologies. 
So if you are an aspiring nuclear scientist like me, spread the word.